Thank you, uh, Nanju Sang, for that kind uh, introduction. Uh, to the question of uh, what it is you design, uh, my answer in this presentation will be institutions, uh, particularly architectural institutions in Korea, uh, particularly in Seoul and Gwangju. Uh, and I use the word building architectural institutions, a much more conventional term, because uh, the work that I've been involved in actually involves, I think, uh, a, a lot of different levels of, of architecture. And we've seen that in the past couple of days that architecture can be defined uh, and, and performs at, at a, device, a device diverse level of, of um, scales and uh, constitutions. Uh, and so I use building because we are also involved in a wide range of, of um, definitions of architecture, but also including the more traditional uh, built project. And, uh, in, and we're dealing with three different uh, entities, Korea as a, as a nation state, Seoul as one of the largest metropolises in the world, uh, 25 million, uh, Gwangju, a provincial city in Korea, 1.5 million. And uh, Nanju Sang, gave me a very you know, nice introduction, but uh, I've been very busy the couple, past couple of years. Uh, this is not bragging, actually. <laughs> uh, and there's a reason that I've been in working so hard and a lot, because uh, in recent years, uh, interest in architecture, uh, not just as a kind of building activity, but as a kind of cultural phenomena, has, um, has has had an explosion in uh, the Korean context. And so I will talk a little bit about the projects that have been going on, uh, and some of them I have been directly involved in. And there's a reason for this explosion of architectural and cultural institutions in Korea. And most of these new institutions were created after the 1990s. Uh, and I've just given you a, a brief list of just the major public uh, cultural institutions that are going on. At the end of the list, uh, 2017, the Seoul Metropolitan Government is initiating a new architecture, Biennale, on top of all the Biennales that Shohei had shown in the previous section. So we understand that there is not one day that passes in the year that somewhere there's a Biennale going on. And despite of that, we're trying to create this new thing again, and I will explain the context to this. Uh, there is, of course, a historical context to, uh, to the way architecture is changing in Korea. Uh, Korea, after the Korean War in 1953, was one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, in the 1960s, in, it embarked on, a, on rapid development, uh, economic uh, growth, and uh, the 80s, particularly with the Olympics, was a, a watershed moment where the explosion of, of real estate and, and urban development. But at the same time, there were uh, important political uh, uh, transformations. Uh, the most symbolic was the 1980 Gwangju People's Uprising. Uh, it was a tragic event. Uh, thousands of people were killed uh, by the army. And this was a moment uh, that, uh, whose legacy we now see in the Gwangju Biennale and also in the new uh, art center that I'm, a uh, cultural center that I'm going to introduce. And so, uh, beginning in the late 1980s, there's a, a democratic movement, and by the early 90s, we are a, have become a democratic um, political entity. And so, traditionally, in the old developmental state, uh, in the conservative authoritarian government, architecture had also a very conservative uh, a role. It was a, a kind of mechanism for economic development. Culturally, uh, they served nationalistic agendas in these traditional uh, museum institutions. But after the 1990s, uh, architecture has a very different role. It's much more open, it's much more soft. And so in these Biennale public art projects, you see a very different kind of, of architecture that is working. Uh, it can be very, very uh, ad hoc, but also spectacular. This is uh, Kupimelblau's 
uh, facility that was built in 2011 for the Busan International Film Festival. So the BIFF and the Gwangju Biennale is considered the two success stories of Korean in this new sort of post-1990s uh, cultural institution building. But at the same time, it is still under danger. Uh, uh, last year's, uh, this year's uh, Busan International Film Festival, the public budget was cut into half. And next year for the Gwangju Biennale, again, the public funding is going to be cut into half. There are complex reasons for this, uh, a lot of politics and economics are going on. And so the rise of public institutions in culture also uh, carries with it the same kind of, of, of danger that this is um, not always a, a very stable situation. Uh, in terms of, of the architectural uh, uh, curatorial projects that I've been involved in the past uh, couple of years, um, uh, this exhibition was on the architect Min Seok Cho, who is the principal of math studies, and uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was held at Plateau, one of the wings of Samsung Museum of Art. And um, it was a show that uh, uh, brought in the largest audience in the history of this museum. And so I'm, this is, I'm bragging about this, actually. Uh, last year, as uh, Nanjo Sang explained, uh, we won, the Korean Pavilion won the, the Golden Lion, and then this traveled back to Seoul. It's now showing in New York. Uh, but when it showed in Seoul, it was also the largest audience um, for an exhibition in this museum. And so what is happening is that, that Korean society is really interested in architecture, especially in this sort of cultural setting. And so we are moving on from the old uh, traditional uh, models of architecture as a kind of building, as a wing of, of, of uh, construction, of uh, economic development to a kind of uh, cultural setting. And, and this has a, has a growing uh, uh, audience in society. And uh, we don't have an architectural biennale. I think the Seoul uh, Biennale that will be inaugurated in 2017 will be the first uh, fully architectural biennale. But I had uh, the opportunity to work in the fourth Gwangju Design Biennale a few years ago. And the topic itself is very relevant to what we're talking about today. And, and it was a kind of questioning about what design is, uh, trying to expand the notion of of design, and I won't go too much into this. Uh, the directors were Sung Yo Sang, the Korean architect, and uh, Ai Weiwei, and I was um, functioning as the chief curator uh, in this uh, system. And uh, we had an array of thematic things. Um, uh, when it, we, we were going to not just deal with famous uh, designer products and, and, and uh, designers, but we were we central the idea was that we're going to deal with uh, the unnamed, with communities, uh, and uh, you know we dealt with issues that traditionally were not considered within the design field: prosthetics, uh, IEDs, uh, body design, cosmetic surgery. These kind of topics were all uh, very central to the uh, exhibition, the Biennale in 2011, but. Uh, uh, I'm going to just talk uh, briefly about the way we organize it. We have a complex, uh, about six kind of thematics, and then we thought that we were not going to approach the Biennale exhibition space as a white box, that we were going to integrate this within the exhibition space and with the city. And so we had these kind of ideas about what is place and what is not place. Uh, we would mix these thematics together, and create uh, real building projects outside into the city, link them into the space, and it had a very kind of complex uh, organization. And, and those who have had uh, curatorial experience will know that usually what happens is that you have a thematic, you assign a certain space to it, and that's the way you, you move. But we deliberately decided to mix these thematics and each exhibition space, we had four floors, large floors, ha would have a different kind of architectural urban sort of quality. And, and you know how complicated and difficult and painful you know, coordinating these things were. And, and that was sort of like my task. And an interesting sort of um, 
discussion, actually conflict, uh, was going on with this issue because Weiwei thought that we didn't really need this. You know, why why would you try to artificially create different kind of spaces in these um, exhibition halls? And this idea was mainly the Korean architect Sung Hyo Sang's idea, and so they were sort of in conflict. But then Weiwei got detained. You, you, it was 2011 and then he couldn't get out of Beijing and so Mr. Sung won and we went into this direction. And it turned out actually quite interesting. We were actually very, very skeptical about whether this would work. And so this is a kind of computer image of one of the uh, exhibition spaces that were called Cluster City. And then as it was built, it became a quite amazing architectural space. And then we and this is the food section, actually. So one of the design topics that we had was designing food, uh, food communities. And this is sort of what we thought was the dinner place. And so people will come here and, and eat different foods. And so we thought this is a communal dining space. And so these kinds of architectural interventions did create a fascinating uh, design biennale. Uh, it also, again, became the largest audience of the Biennale, and so uh, uh, we were trying to get people to intervene as you would in everyday uh, architecture and in the city. And so here is, is a, a kind of intervention, an uh, investigation about architecture. Uh, the, is, the space itself is kind of a, a city, a kind of architecture. We deal with topics about architecture and design that is not conventional, and we discovered that people are very, very interested in these kind of uh, situations. And because it is uh, architects, a bunch of architects doing this, of course you have to build follies. And so we, this in 2011, this Biennale initiated the Urban Follies project in Gwangju. The first year, uh, 10 of them were built. Uh, the second um, uh, phase, Nicholas Hirsch was the commissioner for that. We built tw 10 more. So we have about 20 follies uh, around the city of Gwangju, and uh, it's, it is going to go on, I, I understand, but uh, there have been, because there's a new mayor, and this always happens, uh, this is, going to, is being uh, reformulated. Uh, along with these uh, uh, Biennale institutions, we had several major cultural institutions built in the past few years. Uh, and the two of uh, the of these projects, one is Zahadid's uh, DDP, what we call Dongdaemun Design Plaza, and then um, the other one is the um, Asia Culture Center that is in Gwangju. Uh, these were all public projects. This is a Seoul city government projects, and these two buildings were considered sort of the last phase of overbuilding prior to the, 90, uh, to the 2007, 2008 uh, financial crisis. And so everybody was very, very worried about how you're going to run this. And so, of course, Zaha's projects are always very controversial. Uh, we decided that we're not going to uh, cancel this. <laughs> and it did get built in uh, 2013. And the new mayor uh, came in and decided that, uh, that we are not going to put any more public funds into this. This is going to be a self-running uh, uh, cultural facility. And so it became a, the, a private foundation was created. And now this is uh, running by its own finances. And so, for example, this space, which was going to originally programmed to become a public library run by the city government, is now uh, you know, rented out to, to shops. And so it is actually doing very well after it's about a year and a half and it's financially very successful. But again, it has lost the kind of public agenda that was originally uh, a part of its program. And so for me, I would, when I talk with the mayor, I, I tell him, you have to bring back certain amounts of, of, of the public agenda back to this project. Another project that is now uh, under progress, uh, it just had its pre-opening. It's a huge facility. And this time I am not bragging uh, because it is probably the largest uh, uh, multi-complex center in the world. Uh, but it's in, centered in a small 
provincial city in Gwangju, which has the Gwangju Biennale, of course. So, so this came out of from a, a presidential uh, campaign, and just before the day before the election, uh, he won the uh, election, and he pulled through with his uh, campaign promise that he would make Gwangju the cultural hub of Asia. And so <laughs> the major project was this this um, uh, this. And it has multiple facilities. By itself, these are major facilities, but they are all together in one large space. So we have a children's museum, a museum for democracy, a theater, uh, exhibition halls, and archives and research. And each are huge. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm showing you old uh, photographs. These spaces have now been completed. The theater is fully open, and it just finished its uh, initial uh, festival. Uh, it's a multiple complex with uh, 3,000 uh, seating experimental spaces. Uh, the exhibition, we have two air hangar scale uh, spaces, and then this is uh, one of the largest exhibitions. This is the uh, Children's Muse Museum, and this is the floor plan for the archives and collections, the archives and research center that I am presently working on to create a new architectural collection. Uh, so this is the research, uh, archives and research center as it's being completed. And the director is Sun Jung Kim, a, a close friend of, of uh, Nan Joo Sang, uh, a curator. And uh, we've sort of worked together to set a direction where the collection uh, has to be in tune with the scale and the ambition of the cultural center. It should be thematic rather than an author-centered archive. It has to be contemporary, multidisciplinary, international, public, and of course we didn't have much time, and so it has to be a fast-track process. And so for my part, I'm, I'm just doing the architectural collection. As you can see, the, there are multiple thematics going on and, and just a, 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 a one view about of, of the way that uh, the spaces are being uh, created. Um, my task was to build a new architectural collection, and uh, what I've and I've set up several thematics. Uh, the most important is the elements, what I call the elements and systems. And what we are doing is we are, we are collecting full-scale mock-up pieces of our, of buildings. And of course, this building is right next door, nearby here. Um, and this, we thought, would be a, a primary example of, of the curtain wall system that is uh, an essential part of a contemporary building. Uh, this, the slide on the uh, left here, this is a view of, of the um, piece as it was installed in last year's Venice Biennale. And so this, uh, these pieces, part of it, were brought in uh, from Alejandro Zaira's Polo's uh, installation in Venice Biennale. So we met in Venice, and I told him that we were creating this, this new collection, and we collaborated in bringing uh, uh, many of the pieces that he had already installed in Venice. Uh, another example from that collection, uh, dealing with double skin, a uh, very important uh, uh, mode of, of, of facade in uh, contemporary architectural practice. We, are, we have collected a piece from the Zahadis DDP, and so these kind of, 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 of tectonic um, thematic of trying to show what contemporary building is, uh, the nature of it through these um, full-scale installations is one of the things that I'm doing. We're doing uh, production workshops, building uh, uh, full-scale pieces within the spaces, and I'm working with Korean architects and also with Kengo Kuma, who is going to install a pavilion in January next year. And so this is the space that uh, we have here, uh, the pieces installed. And the way I explain reason this uh, is that when I talk to, particularly to bureaucrats who don't have an idea of what I'm doing, I tell them we're trying to create a contemporary version of the VNA, where uh, they collected uh, pieces of architecture that were left uh, from all the, the destruction of development that occurred uh, in the Europe during the peace, that period. And so what we're doing is kind of create a, 
a contemporary uh, collection of these pieces, and maybe in a few decades these will become important um, historical uh, uh, a collection as we see in, in VNA now. We also have an Asian urban architectural collection. I won't get into that too much. We have an urbanism thematic. And these are all together in, in this large complex. And so people were very, very worried about um, the situation, whether this small provincial city would be able to sustain the audience to make this a lively place. And we just had the pre-opening in early September. And, and I think that it, it is a wonderful kind of situation. It's a unique situation where you have this large facility, which is a kind of anti-monument. So the main uh, plaza is sunken. It's beneath ground, and all the facilities sort of meet in this plaza. Uh, the design by Kyu sung a Korean-American architect. And so you see this kind of traditional architectural fabric design that brings in these new kinds of facilities. And you see this uh, very traditional uh, kind of architectural intervention. The Seoul Metropolitan Government is, has, uh, has new initiative because uh, last year, we adopted a new kind of institution called the city architect uh, system. And so, uh, Seung Hyo Sang, again, uh, uh, has, has initiated new kinds of projects. And for example, this spring, MVRD, we just won a kind of Seoul Highline project that is actually going to uh, be built. And the Seoul Architecture Biennale that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we are going to have a kickoff symposium in a week or so, uh, Alejandro again is uh, directing, and we set up this kind of agenda, and we're talking about what this urban biennale can do, and the way that architecture can function within a specific bureaucratic situation. And so uh, the, the issue primarily will be whether the biennale can, can succeed in a kind of a sustainable bureaucratic system, and so we call this the instrumentalization of the Biennale. And so all these experiences actually is very, very difficult. It's very, very painful. You have to work with bureaucrats at the national, uh, city level. And so uh, the way that I've been working, the kind of situations that we are creating, I thought that this could be best expressed by this sketch by the architect of the Asia Culture Center, Kyusumu. And so in the early stages of his design, he, he did the sketch about a web of how all these things are connected. And uh, two days ago, when, when uh, Joichi and, and David were presenting, they were showing these loops, of metabolism, new metabolism. And I thought that, no, you know, I'm not in a loop. And, uh, I think somehow these, this loop model had this kind of com comforting uh, sort of effect that you felt that you were in a kind of larger system and, and that what you were doing all had this sort of larger meaning in this sort of larger system. But here I think this is not, I don't know whether where we're going actually. We have certain agendas about what architecture can and should be. We're constantly expanding that idea, but the idea is very, very unstable. People are interested, um, people are supportive, but at the same time, you don't really know exactly where you're going, and there's a sort of instability to it. And I think that instability is very difficult, but at the same time, very, very open-ended, uh, experimental at some times, painful at some times, but that is the kind of energy that drives the creation of new architectural institutions now in Korea. Thank you very much.